Okay, so in today's lab, we're going to talk about how to measure temperature with a data logger. This is a Campbell Scientific CR1000 data logger. Uh, and basically what data loggers do is measure voltage in, in a circuit. And then that voltage is somehow converted to a measurement such as temperature or, or ponding centimeters or something like that. So to measure temperature, we're going to be using a thermocouple. And a thermocouple is just two wires that are joined at one end and then they'll be inserted into a circuit in the data logger and uh, we measure a, a, a voltage proportional to the panel temperature and that gets converted to the temperature of the thermocouple. So we're going to write a data logger program using the computer and then we're going to set the data logger up out in the field to measure the temperature in the rain garden at different depths and then that temperature is going to be used to do a calculation of the top, the temperature lag uh, at, over time with those dips. So we have two different types of thermocouples. Uh, this one's just a short one for demonstration purposes in the lab, in the inside the lab. And then this is the actual one we'll be using in the field. It has the same wire uh, twisted together at one end, and it's just covered by a piece of heat shrink tubing to protect it. And then there are three wires that get connected to the data logger. So the first thing we have to do is write the data logger program. And to write the program, we'll use a program, another program called Shortcut. And Shortcut is just part of a software package sold by Campbell Scientific. So we click on Shortcut and we tell it to write a new program. We're using a CR1000 data logger, so we click OK on the CR1000. We're going to do a scan interval of five seconds, and the scan interval is just how often the data logger reads through the program. <clears throat> the next thing we have to do is add our sensors. And so we need two different sensors. We're going to measure the panel temperature, because the panel temperature is used as the reference to measure the temperature of the thermocouple, so we add that first. So we click on panel temperature and add it. And it asks for what we want to name it. We'll just name it PTEMPC. And then the next thing we do is we select the type of thermocouple that we're going to use out in the field. And this particular one is called a type E. And the two different metals are chromal and constantan. So we're going to add that over to our data logger. And we're going to be measuring six of these out in the field. So we'll tell it we're going to program for six. Say OK. And the temperature range that we're going to use is in degrees Celsius from negative 22 to 60 degrees. So all those are now added to our data logger program. In the next screen, we're going to set up our data table. And we're going to name our table uh, Therm 15 minute, or Therm 15. And we're going to take measurements from the data logger and record them every 15 minutes. So we select minutes in the time category. Type in 15 so the data logger knows to take a measurement every 15 minutes. We'll measure the uh, minimum battery voltage. So we just click on battery voltage and add that to the table. And we're going to measure the panel temperature in all six temperature probes every 15 minutes. And we're just going to take the average of those. So the data logger program is going to scan every five seconds. And, and store those readings in a temporary memory, and then every 15 minutes it'll take the average of that temperature. We're also going to set up a second table to measure the daily minimum and maximum temperature. <clears throat> and so we'll just call this table min max. And we're going to measure this every 24 hours. So we select hours in the time category and store every 24, so this will take the average every 24 hours. And we add those same parameters to this table, the minimum battery voltage. And now we're going to do the minimum of the temperature, the panel temperature and the thermocouple temperature. So we select all of those and say minimum and add them to the table. So it takes the minimum measurement over the day. We're also going to do the maximum measurement during the day and we'll do the average over the day. 
So once we have all the parameters added to our table, we're pretty much done. We just have to finish the program and save it and then send it to the data logger. So now the program is saved. We can look at the summary of the program. And it will actually give us a wiring diagram to show how each thermocouple should be wired to the data logger. In this case, we have a purple wire, a red wire, and then a ground. And so the purple wire goes into uh, the high differential channel. So we have, we have a bunch of differential channels on the data logger. H means high, L means low. And so we're going to, each thermocouple will be measured at one H and one of the L uh, ports on the data logger. So the purple wire goes into the H. The red wire goes into the L. And then the clear wire just goes into a ground. And so we'll, we'll set up all six of the temperature probes on a differential channel before we send the data logger program out in the field. And then we'll send the program to the data logger. So this is the temperature probe installed or wired to one differential channel. So the data logger is powered by a 12 volt battery. And this, these particular sensors don't require any voltage. So we're only using the battery to give the data logger power to make the, the measurements. So we're going to connect to the data logger and we're going to send the program using a program called LoggerNet. So we hook up to the data logger, we make sure we're, we have power, and then we go to the connect screen on the LoggerNet program. This particular data logger's name is Soul Physics Lab, so we're going to connect to it. So we save the program on the desktop. We're going to open it and send it to the data logger. And we always get a warning prompt before you send a new program, because once you send a program, it, it erases all of the old data on the data logger. So once you're sure that you want to do that, just click yes. And the program is then sent to the data logger. Once, it's, <clears throat> once the data is sent, you just said okay, and you're done. Okay, to install the thermocouples, what we did is we put two thermocouples at different depths. So the first two were two feet down. So we augered a hole, put these down, and then buried them in there at two feet. Then once we got up to a foot and a half, we put two more thermocouples, buried those. Then the last two were buried six inches from the surface. We put those in and completely covered the hole. Now we're going to collect the, the uh, data from the data logger we had installed out of the rain garden. And to do that, we're just going to connect to the data logger, and then we're going to do a, a custom data collection. So we click on custom, and we're going to download our 15-minute table and our 24-hour table. So we'll click on both of these and just uh, save them to the desktop.
And then we're going to collect all the data from the data file. So we select, select all the data. And we just say start collection. So it should download all the data that's in those two tables to the desktop of the computer. Okay, so it collected both tables. So we'll disconnect from the data logger and close the software. And now we'll use Excel to open the data files. So to open the data files, we have to tell Excel to open a non-Excel type file. So when you click open, navigate to the desktop, and then select all files so that you can see the non-Excel file extensions. So our data file is soil physics temperature 15. So we'll open that file. And in the text file, uh, the data is comma delimited. So select delimited and hit next. And then when you click on commas, it'll separate out the, the data into the different columns and just hit finish. So now in the Excel file, we have our 15 minute data imported from the uh, week of soil temperature measurements. And you can scroll down and see all the temperatures, and these are the average temperatures at each of the six data probes, or the six temperature probes. Mm -hmm.